Hello. Uh, happy Monday. Sorry. <laughs> Had to realize what day it is. Um, it's the Scott of it all. And I wanted to talk about mental health. Um, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I realized um, I was on Instagram scrolling, you know, when as everybody does, I'm sure, like when you don't have, when you have time on your hands. And someone was talking about their own mental health. <clears throat> and I realized that I have discussed uh, my suicide attempts, but I've never talked about my mental health. Um, and I wanted to talk about that, so. My mental health, uh, my awareness around my mental health started really young. Uh, I remember when I turned 13, uh, my mom kept asking me what I wanted to do. Um, did I want to have a party? And for some reason, I was feeling really weird, like oddly emotional. Um, and I didn't understand why. And it probably, in retrospect, it was probably just, you know, adolescence, really. Adolescence was kicking in and my hormones or everything was just going off. But I wasn't really understanding how to articulate what was going on with me. And as a person who loves words um, and is really succinct, and I pretty much always have been, I always um, kind of found myself in books. I read a lot as a kid, I was bookish. Um, it was frustrating for me not being able to put the words together with how I was feeling. And that triggered something in me with my mental health. Like it created um, tension in my body, like not knowing how to let this out of me. Um, so that was my first experience with it. And then my next major, I always had bouts of depression. Um, and they were pretty intense bouts. Like I would um, go into my room at, when I was a teenager and not come out for, you know, days. Um, I wouldn't even eat really. Um, I, I drink water, but that was pretty much it. Uh, and my parents just kind of left me to my world. Um, and then, uh, my mother suggested that I start seeing a, a therapist, which I did, um, which oddly we had a conversation about that, uh, two weeks ago because I was really appreciative of the, the fact that my parents were very uh, open to the fact of me seeking help because a lot of times black families in particular don't believe in uh, therapy. They believe that, you know, you just need to take your problems to the Lord. And, you know, I am a spiritual person I believe in God uh, and I have uh, evidence of God in my life and the things that he has done for me. But I also believe that sometimes someone needs to speak back and give you resources and give you tangible things that you can utilize to make yourself better. Um, so I saw this therapist for I don't know, a couple years maybe. Um, and I di didn't go on medication. And fast forward into my 20s. Um, I'm living in Atlanta. I was, I'd was i lived in New York for a while, for three years. I lived in, I moved to Atlanta and I am probably, I'm gonna say 25, 26. And I decided to go, I have a job, I, I work in corporate America. I decided to go to London for the weekend. And when I was coming back, I was at the airport. I go, I go to the ticket desk 
to check in and my flight is delayed by seven hours. Um, and in that moment, I had a panic attack and I started breathing heavy. Um, my heart was racing, I was sweating. Um, and I, I, it felt like I was gonna pass out, to be honest. Um, and I called my parents, who did not know that I was in London, by the way. Um, and my mother is like, wait, she hears like the announcements and they're speaking in a British accent. And then she hears, you know, the, cause they make announcements in different languages in, in Heathrow. And she's like, what, where are you? <laughs> and I, I kind of, I, I glossed over the fact that I was in London and then she could hear that I was having a problem breathing and all of this kind of stuff. So when I got back, um, I, my mom called me again and she was like, listen, you haven't seen a therapist in a while and you need to, um, check in with, you know, a therapist and find a therapist and sort this all out. Um, I didn't, I did not do that. Um, uh, the second, the thing that made me do it was I was spinning out of control and I was doing things to uh, self-soothe. For example, um, I was eating a lot. I was, I was shopping a lot. And that was the thing that made me stop. I, in one month, I got a $5,000 American Express bill and I didn't have the money to pay it. Um, and this was back when I had just a green card that you have to pay at the end of every, you have to pay, like you can't carry over a balance like you can with some different cards now. Um, so I had to call my parents cause I didn't have the money. I think I had like maybe $3,000. I don't remember. Um, so my mother will you know, the, my parents gave me the money, but my mother was like, okay, you have to go see a counselor. Like, I'll give you the money, but you have to see somebody and figure this out because this is ridiculous. So I did. And that was the beginning of my awareness around my mental health and my awareness around things that trigger me and things that, uh, I ultimately have control over um, and, and my brain and how not to be triggered, how to calm myself in a productive manner, like through breathing and exercise and diet and, you know, taking care of myself, taking care of my mental health and not getting involved in situations. It, it's really one of the reasons why I monitor my alcohol intake. I make sure I ex exercise with some sort of frequency. Um, here lately, not as much as I probably need to. I am aware of my thoughts constantly. I'm aware of the people that are around me and the things that they say to me. I'm aware of the media intake and the images that I absorb. I do not, I limit my news intake because um, it affects me in some kind of way. I lose sleep over the things that are going on in the world. Um, just because, you know, that's who I am. Um, so I limit those things. I'm aware of them. I read about them and I have an opinion about them, but I have to kind of monitor that because it, it has an impact on how I, um, it, has, it, it just impacts me in a way that is substantial. It, sometimes it can be debilitating for me and it will cause me to become immobile and I don't move, I don't participate in my own life, which is, you know, a scary place to be. Um, yeah, so. I can feel myself getting a little emotional about that. Cause you know, like when you think about that, um, 
if you've ever been in like a dark place like that, it's not uh, a great place to be. And so because of knowing what that darkness looks like, I am, and I also understand that it is a, it, it can happen in like in a blink of an eye that you can go back, you can take a step back into that darkness. Maybe not as dark as it was in the complete darkness, but a step backwards. And it's such a slippery slope that I never want to be there. So one of the reasons I'm so fiercely protective of myself is because of that darkness and because I don't ever want to um, venture down that road. And it's really one of the reasons why I kind of vehemently um, don't allow people to tell me what I said or, you know, because I'm very clear about my thoughts and and how I speak and I'm intentional with that. So when people have misperceptions about me, it's it's really one of the reasons why it bothers me so much. Even though, and what's interesting about that because it is kind of like, I don't really care what people think, but then I kind of do care what people think because I don't ever want to be misperceived or, um, yeah, mis I, don't, I don't like having people uh, just have a misperception about me. Um, so when I started on the, on my mental health journey, like my counselor, oh, and let me, I'll talk about that for a second, because I, I always wanted to, I never wanted to be prescribed medication. Even though I was, I never wanted additional medication in my body just because I believe that the body is designed to heal itself and I don't really want um, chemicals in my body. Um, I'm kind of just like that. Uh, like, I, I, I'm real cautious about, I tend to like natural kind of things. Um, now, that's not to say that I did not take the medication because I did, like I will try things to better myself. If it works for me, great. But I try to limit uh, the things that I intake in a chemical way, but just because I think that everything that I have is inside of me. And, you know, I think we're, we're too quick to take a prescription and, and not question the, the um, after effects or side effects that we might that might happen to us because we're trying to heal one thing but then something else happens so um i took medication i've taken several medications and then i kind of found yoga and i learned about um diaphragmatic breathing which means that you're using your diaphragm most people use your you use your chest breathing when you should, really should be using your breath from your diaphragm um and i liked it a lot like i would go to class two three four times a week and i just kind of liked how i felt afterwards just because of it taught me how often i am holding my breath which creates all this tension in your body and you're not even aware of it um, and, you know, it taught me how to release all of that and just be conscious of breathing. Um, and I think that most times, most people are not even conscious of the fact that they are breathing. There are moments throughout the day that I am aware that I am tense, like my body is stiff, like, and yoga teaches you that. Um, and it's, uh, there's a word for it, it's called proprioception. And it's about the awareness of your body and what it is doing um, without you looking at it. And and because of yoga and because of the breathing, it taught me how to be aware of my body and when it is tense and how to make myself relax, which translates into calming yourself and 
having um, an, a, an awareness that elevates you to a different level of um, understanding um, how all of the things are just kind of playing out in your environment. So I said all this to say that I think that everyone is on some sort of mental health journey. I think the pandemic, I said this to my buddy Jeff th just the other day, like we were talking about how, you know, people invite us places and I just don't <laughs> want to go. Like I'm, I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of okay in my house. And I, I said to my buddy, he was feeling the same way that I think we all kind of have a pandemic PTSD and you know after dealing with all that stuff of the pandemic and being in the house and you know getting COVID or knowing people that got COVID or knowing people that passed away or you know all of this kind of stuff that was going on in the world we are just kind of in this state of shock and it's left us a little bit exhausted not a little well in my case a lot exhausted I mean also, there's all these other variables at play, like I'm older now, my body's older, you know, um, most people gained weight, I did. Um, and it, so it's having this impact that we still are trying to figure out. And it also has had an impact on our mental health. Like, I know I'm not the same person that I was prior to the pandemic. I'm, I am a lot more cautious. I don't know why. Um, I have not been to, I've not stepped foot in a movie theater um, since the pandemic. I don't know why. It's, it's not a conscious thing that I'm aware of. I just have not. I have been to a concert um, at City Winery. Uh, I've done other stuff. I mean, I go out in public, but I am still, like I go to the grocery store. I, you know, I, I went to eat with a guy I'm dating today. Um, I've been to a lot of restaurants. I've been to a lot of parties. I've been on a plane. I've taken trips, but I still am. It doesn't feel like my old life. Um, it feels like those things are almost like a task now versus I look forward to them. Um, and I don't know if I will get that back. Um, uh, and I also don't know if that's a part of the pandemic or if that's just a part of me being older. Um, Cause it could be that, like it, it could be any number of things. It could be any number of combination of things. Um, so yeah, so I think that I am, I'm just thinking about a lot of stuff. I'm thinking about what my life is gonna look like in the next few years what I'm going to do when I retire, what I'm going to, where I'm going to live, how I'm going to live, um, all of those kinds of things that just kind of uh, weigh on me. And I, I know everybody's kind of feeling that. I'm, I'm looking at the economy and, and am I going to have enough money? Um, and I know everybody's thinking about that. I'm, I know I'm not the only one, but as I said before, like, one of those thoughts can turn into 20 of those thoughts. And then the next thing you know, you've created all of this anxiety unnecessarily for things that really haven't even happened yet. And it's kind of a very, it's a dangerous cycle that you can put yourself in if you're not aware of controlling your thoughts and calming yourself. Um, so that's my mental health journey. Um, I think everybody is on it. I think everybody like, and if you're not on it, please join us on a mental health journey and figuring out what you need to be in a better space because we all need something to be in a better space. Um, and you know, as I'm saying that, I realize like I say this to myself and my the people that are close to me know this about myself. I, I'm always aware or I'm always asking myself, what do you need to be okay in this moment? 
And whatever that is, I make it happen. Um, and so I would ask everybody to ask yourself, what is it that you need to be okay in this moment or any moment? Um, because that right there is taking care of yourself. So happy Mental Health Month, uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and try to challenge yourself to just be aware of your thoughts and your breathing and how you are breathing throughout the day. Like just maybe set an alarm. If you have an Apple Watch to set an alarm to remind yourself to breathe because they're on the watch, you can just you know, take a mindful moment and, and breathe for 30 seconds. And I think you'll find that it does make a difference. It definitely, you will feel it in your body. You will feel your body like calm itself and just release some of the tension that you're not even aware that you're carrying around. And that's the Scott of it all. Happy Monday.